Snapchat news is the worst thing to happen to the human race since the Black Death. It perfectly encapsulates everything that people rightfully hate about Gen Z. Every single title is clickbait, the topics that they refer you to are things which could barely even be classed as news, and of course it spreads more misinformation than a politician does lies. The only redeeming thing about it is being able to see the Ben Shapiro show and go, <laughs> What a fucking idiot. Howdy friends, my name is Milo, and today I'm gonna be going back to my roots. Those roots being debunking shitty pseudoscience conspiracy videos. And for those of you that watch my videos semi-frequently, I'm going to have a pretty big channel update, which I will put at the end of this one. Here's the timestamp for it. A few weeks ago, while browsing Snapchat, I stumbled upon an article entitled The Most Mysterious Finds That Science Can't Explain. And it was published by a highly reputable source. That, of course, being History 101. As far as reputable sources go, History 101 is right up there with Harvard, and, um, Web of Science, and, uh, a penis. And with a banner like this, I just knew that I had to look further into this video. So I decided to bravely go where no man has gone before and try and do what History 101 couldn't. That is, of course, to explain the mysteries of science. So without further ado, let's dive right into one of the most mysterious finds science just can't explain. On a number skeletons. The Ananember function as a think tank in Germany during the Second World War. Oh, Jesus, we're starting off with Nazis. What a weird sentence to start off with. No one actually uses the words think tank in normal conversation. Oh, wait, no, I know why they said it like that. It's because they just plagiarized the first sentence of the Anna Neighbor Wikipedia page. <laughs> Seriously, it's almost the exact same fucking sentence. <laughs> I'm sure the people at History 101 are going to have a fantastic grasp on the horrors committed by the Anna Neighbor, considering that their first sentence was stolen from Wikipedia. All right, let's learn about Nazis from Snapchat News. Supported by Hitler, the the organization focused on finding and preserving historical objects. Horse shit. I know that this isn't about the Anna Neighbor, but portraying them as a group of fun-loving, rambunctious archaeology nuts is the most bullshit thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. And beyond it being bullshit, it's also incredibly dangerous. Because by talking about the Anna Neighbor in this tone, it undermines what they actually did. So since these people seem to have about as strong a grasp on reality as Kanye West, allow me to do their job for them and explain to you what the Anna Neighbor were all about. The group was founded by none other than Heinrich Himmler. You know, Hitler's right-hand man, and the one who is directly responsible for orchestrating the genocide that saw the death of over 11 million people. Not exactly a fun-loving Indiana Jones type. But don't worry, because Himmler isn't the only Nazi in this story. The Anna Neighbor was also overseen by Richard Walter Dara, none other than the Reich Minister of Food and Agriculture, which is the most curveball title a person could possibly have, and I genuinely hope that he is the antagonist of the next Wolfenstein game. I have seen enough fictional Hitlers get their much-deserved demise, but I have not seen near Nearly enough Reich ministers of food and agriculture get what's coming to him. Believe it or not, you may actually know Richard Dara already due to his most disgusting and most well-known contribution to society. That, of course, being the Nazi slogan, Blut und Bohren, or Blood and Soil. Some of you may recognize this title from history books, and the others of you will unfortunately recognize it from the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. This was a nationalist slogan used by the Nazis to show how the German identity was the blood of Germany, its people, and the soil of Germany, its land. And the third, in our cast of Hellbound characters is Hermann Wirth, who is the author of this book whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce. But in English, this translates to the prehistory of the Atlantic Nordic race, which was a very formative text for the Ananeba. See, what Himmler and his cronies believed was, I, I shit you not, that there was once an Aryan race who populated Atlantis. And when Atlantis was destroyed, the remaining inhabitants who managed to escape went on to found the great civilizations of Europe. You know, all the great Aryan races, like Rome, and Greece and Egypt. Should someone tell them? I feel like someone should probably tell them. And all of these hateful ideas came together to create the disgusting love child known as Lebensraum, or living space. So the Anna Neighbor's job was to travel around Europe looking for evidence of this non-existent Aryan master race that had once populated the land in order to justify German invasion. And of course, most famously, the Anna Neighbor was fascinated with the occult. Himmler, who scored very low on the sanity scale, thought that he was the reincarnation of a dead king. Specifically, Specifically, the Saxon king Henry the Fowler. In 1936, Otto Rahn, another of the Anna Neighbor members, went on a quest looking for the Holy Grail in, like, Iceland or something. And yes, we have all drawn the same conclusion from this, which is that when you watch the Indiana Jones movies, the Anna Neighbor are the ones that he is killing. <laughs> Oh, 
I could do a whole video on the Ananebo and I probably will at some point because so many modern conspiracies were started by them. Ideas of the giant ice wall, ancient aliens theories, the theory of Atlantis, all of these things were heavily played onto by the Nazis. So a quick recap, the Ananebo are not fun-loving archaeologists, they are a group of vehement Nazi racists who were looking for justification to exterminate those they deemed inferior. But not even in their wildest dreams did the organization know that they would stumble upon a collection of unusual skulls. God, the tone of this article makes me fucking nauseous. Not even in their wildest dreams did these Nazi fucks have any idea that they were gonna- They're fucking fascists, not 10 year olds going on a field trip to the science museum. Unusual skulls that appear to belong to some strange horned creatures, no mouths, and unusual small holes on both sides of their heads, proving the fact that these bones definitely did not belong to any human. You think? You think that doesn't belong to a human? God, that's so easy even a Nazi could figure it out. But to this day, no one really knows what the Ananever were able to dig out once they found the skulls, making this one of the biggest unsolved mysteries of all time. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that was a lot. All right, let's take a closer look at this. So this guy says the skeleton doesn't have a mouth and that doesn't raise any eyebrows. Furthermore, both skulls look very different and I would hazard a guess it's more than just sexual dimorphism. Like, they don't even look like they would be the same creature. And those things he says are eye sockets look really jagged. I, I don't think I would want to have an eyeball next to all of that exposed sharp bone. I am willing to bet almost everything I own that that is not a face of anything. Reminds me of a video I did on TikTok a while back where I was debunking a video where someone was talking about Cyclops skulls that have been found. <laughs> and there was an example that he gave that was just a human skull that was face down. So the place where the spine connects to the uh, bottom of the skull was showing. So it was just one circle. And the thesis was that that was a Cyclops skull when in reality it was just a human skull that was just oriented wrong. So I would imagine that that's kind of what's happening here and we're just not looking at it the way that we should be. Now, just about anyone could probably agree that this isn't an alien, but that wasn't good enough for me because I wanted to figure out what this actually was. My first theory was that it was the skull of some sort of like mid-sized mammal and it showed where the soft palate had worn away and the place where maybe the brain would be through damaged eye sockets. And the only other information I could find on this is that it was allegedly found in Russia somewhere. But I know very little about skeletal anatomy so I decided to consult my discord to see what they thought. And almost immediately I was given half a million answers. Quickly people assumed that it was a sheep or a goat of some kind. Some people questioned whether or not it was real bone. Some people thought it was a bird bone due to the apparent hollowness inside of it. But then one of my users found this diagram, which we were able to trace back to this article and confirm that it actually was a goat skull. The article discusses several different skull hoaxes, but it does talk a fair amount about this one. And it has this amazing diagram, which identifies every single piece of the skull. The eye sockets are the exposed sinuses. The nose holes are the ethmoid bone, which is part of the sinuses. So I guess technically they're kind of part of a nose. And the mouth is the foramen magnum, which is the part of the skull which connects to the spinal column. And also the name of the thing which I totally forgot when I was telling you the story about the human skull that some idiot on TikTok thought was a cyclops. And all of these pieces of evidence beautifully come together to the conclusion that these mysterious alien skulls are the highly weathered remains of a dead goat. Goats are not only a very common farm animal, but are also a common wild animal in different parts of Eastern Europe. And this is probably why they found two skulls that looked vaguely similar, because it's such a common animal that there would be enough skulls that some would probably weather the same way. So no, it's not an alien, it's this guy's grandpa. So instead of describing the Ananeber as an organization focused on finding and preserving historical objects, call them what they really are. A group of goose-stepping fuckwits who were so delusional that they tried to prove they were part of a non-existent master race by consulting the remains of a dead goat. So as I was writing the script for this, History 101 actually published another article, and it's called Five Mysterious Things Found in Antarctica, and I just couldn't resist and had to watch the first 10 seconds of it. With so many mysteries waiting to be uncovered on Earth, have you ever wondered what secrets might lie frozen in the ancient Antarctic ice? Number five, elongated skulls. Oh my God, I haven't even fit, I have barely even started this one and they've already put out another one that seems even fucking worse. I don't know, F subscribe if you wanna see me do a part two to this cause I'll probably have to cover this one. And if we're going to Antarctica and talking about elongated skulls, I can guarantee you there'll be more Nazi rhetoric here. Before I make a part two to this video, why don't I finish part one first? Let's see what other mysteries they have for us. Miniature coffins. In June 1836, a bunch of young boys in Scotland were out hunting for rabbits, but what they ended up finding was much more sinister 
Bunch of boys go hunting for rabbits and they find something far more sinister. Do I feel like I've heard this one before? There. What, behind the rabbit? It is the rabbit. Ah! Jesus Christ! Oh. Oh yeah. In a hidden spot by the side of the slopes of Arthur's seat, the young boys stumbled upon a small cave inside the rock. When they made their way inside, the boys were terrified to discover 17 miniature coffins. I sincerely doubt their first thought was to be terrified. As a man who was once a boy, I feel fairly confident saying that if you found a whole bunch of these little tiny coffins with your buddies, your first thought would not be, <gasps> what's going on here? In reality, their first thoughts when they found these was probably more akin to like, Oh, you McGregor, watch me throw this at the wall over there. This <laughs> is like faint bagpipe music plays in the background. <laughs> Fun fact, did you know that if you own land in Scotland, you can officially be called a lord? The reason that I know that is because today's sponsor is Established Titles. How'd you like that for a transition? Established Titles is a company which will allow you to buy one or more square feet of land on a private estate in Scotland. Which means that since you are now a landowner in Scotland, you will get your very own certificate with a crest and everything to prove that you are in fact a lord or lady. And the lord title is made even more entertaining when it's put in front of the most common last name from southern Italy. You'll also get a plot number so you can see where your little piece of Scotland is. Although I have no idea what the building rights are there, I know I for one plan on seceding from Scotland and then annexing the squares around me. And on top of that, established titles plants a tree with every order, helping keep the world sparkly and green. The Lord or Lady title is also an official prefix, meaning that you can have it put on a uh, airline ticket. And it makes a fantastic last minute gift idea for Mother's Day, which is coming up on May 8th. You better not have forgotten like you did last year. And last but not least, established titles is running a sale right now, and if you use this code, you will get 10% off your order. A link to that will be in my description. <laughs> link to that will be in my description, or you can click the little title card that'll be somewhere up here. All right, now let's get back to the little lords and their even littler coffins. 17 miniature coffins containing some pretty, intricately carved male figurines, with some missing one or even both arms. But to this day, no one knows what these figurines represent or who placed them there. So technically that's true. We don't know who made them and we don't know who placed them there. But that doesn't necessarily make this nearly as sinister as he's making it sound. If not knowing who did something or why it was done is that scary, this guy must just live in constant fear. Who filled the pothole that was here yesterday? Why is there a hubcap propped up against that fence? Why does my garbage disappear every Monday when I put it on the curb? So there's no concrete truth about what these coffins are, but we have some ideas. But you won't be shocked to know that they didn't mention any of them because they aren't nearly spooky enough to back up this weird clickbait video. So firstly, they weren't actually found in a cave. The National Museum of Scotland describes it as being found in a recess in the rock. So while they do show this video, it probably wasn't like the scene in Harry Potter where they're sailing across like the Lake of the Dead. It was more probably just like a kid opening a geocache. Quite literally, actually, because apparently they were just found behind a slate. And originally they were all given away or sold to private buyers, which is exactly what you would do when you are terrified at your discovery. An ancient artifact that seems to be draining my life force as I touch it, must be worth a fortune. Today, there are only eight of the coffins that remain, and all of them are in the National Museum of Scotland. And thankfully, in the 1990s, they were able to do a full archaeological analysis of these artifacts. The museum was able to deduce that the figurines were likely all made by the same person, and they seem to suggest that it may have been a shoemaker who did it due to the tools that they think were used and the materials they were made of. Personally, I think that's narrowing it down too much. There were a lot of skilled craftsmen before the world made that not necessary anymore, so I don't think you need to be a shoemaker in order to know how to make a little doll. And the fabric that the dolls were dressed in dated to about the 1830s, meaning that they had only been there for a handful of years before they were found. So, why? There are a lot of interpretations as to what these little dolls were. Of course, there are the spooky outlandish ones, like they were uh, made by a murderer who, and he left them behind for all of his victims that he killed as ceremonial offerings. But that is j about as outlandish as suggesting that an alien left them there. There's also urban legends that there was some sort of curse associated with them, but making up stories about curses is sort of the only thing you could do to entertain yourself when you lived in rural Scotland in the 1800s. But the most likely option is that these are an example of a symbolic or honorific burial. And more often than not, these are done uh, in remembrance of people who did not have a chance to be buried on their home soil. For those who were lost in combat in other countries, 
or more likely for this area, sailors who were lost at sea. It is unknown whether or not these dolls were part of a symbolic burial or whether or not they were stored here by the craftsmen with the intention of being sold later. But personally, it wouldn't surprise me if this was an honorific burial. In the middle of the 1800s, there was a ton of maritime trade without the advent of modern safety equipment. And when living on an island, maritime trade is something that just about everyone would have been connected with. Perhaps these were left behind by survivors of a shipwreck to honor their lost crewmates, or family or friends who knew the crew of a ship that was lost at sea. In reality, we will never know why these little dolls were left here, but if it is some sort of ceremonial burial, they truly could not have picked a more beautiful spot to do it. All right, that was a good story, but an underwhelming mystery. Let's see what else they got for me. Rare Whale Skeleton. Are you shitting me? If you thought that the world was a mysterious place, Wait till you take a look at all the mysteries lying within the depths of the ocean. What the fuck is the target audience of this video? Children? Is this a video for children? You started by talking about Nazis, so I sure hope this isn't for children. A few kilometers away from Bangkok, a bunch of Thai archaeologists discovered the skeleton of an unusually large whale-like animal, just its head measuring three meters, with the entire skeleton going up to 12 meters. A whale-like animal. You mean a fucking whale? And while it's still not confirmed as to what kind of fish the skeleton really belongs to... It's not a fish! It's a whale! <laughs> Why are you like this? Chances are the fish belongs to a family of prehistoric animals who now live deep within the ocean, never coming up. Chances are, you're wrong. This is the skeleton of a bride's whale. It is between three and 5,000 years old, and it was found seven and a half miles from the coast. The sea level and coastline of much of the world was wildly different during the middle of the Holocene. And this is actually a very important discovery in piecing together the marine paleoecology of Thailand at the time. But there is absolutely no mystery as to what this creature is. He really harps on about the size as if that's some sort of thing that gives merit to how mysterious it is. But in reality, that isn't even that big for a bride's whale. They have found individuals up to 15 meters, and this type of whale averages in at about 12 to 14 meters long. The thing that really gets me is that this isn't even some example of like a paleo whale or like a whale ancestor. It's just a modern whale. This is just someone running out of ideas and trying to make a whale skeleton sound exciting. It's pathetic. Let's hope whatever they have next is good. 30 mummies discovered in Egypt. Whoa, whoa, back up. Mummies in Egypt? No way. In 2019, around 30 wooden coffins of men, women, and children of all ages were discovered in Luxor, Egypt. But the strange part was that all of these remains were so well preserved, making this the first time when a number of coffins have been discovered this way. What does that even mean? Multiple coffins, very well preserved, making it the first time that multiple were found preserved? Does this guy know what a mummy is? The coffins were lying one on top of the other, several layers deep, so it wouldn't be easy for anyone to stumble upon them. Yeah, typically the point of burying someone is so that people don't find them. It's kind of why we have, you know, funeral services instead of just dropping grandma off an overpass. According to the excavation team, the bodies date all the way back to 1000 BC when Egypt was under the rule of the pharaohs. It was under the rule of the pharaohs for like 2,500 years. Why do you sound so surprised by this? So it's a relief that bodies were well preserved to make sure that they didn't rot away before they were discovered. Okay, okay. Firstly, how dare you show footage from the mummy 2017 when talking about actual mummies? <laughs> And secondly, that's your thesis? That's your great mystery, is that they are still there and that you can, they're, they're preserved. That's the, that's the whole point of a mummy. Someone give the people at History 101 a vacation. They probably burned themselves out rubbing their two collective brain cells together to come up with this idea. I'd like to personally address this to the team who put this video together. Uh, this is the Wikipedia page for mummy. I know that you frequent Wikipedia, but you clearly didn't this time. Consider this a gift with love from the Mini Minuteman, from, from, all, from all of us here at Mini Minuteman. XO, XO Gossip Girl. All right, I'm feeling good. That one was stupid and gave me a second wind. I'm, I'm ready for the next one. Ukraine's Skeleton Lovers. Okay, I just need you guys to watch this one all the way through because th this one's a doozy. After being buried for over 3,000 years, the skeletons of a man and woman were removed from an ancient burial ground in Ukraine. But what was so special about these skeletons is the fact that both of them were holding each other in a loving embrace, indicating that this is how the two must have died also, making for one of the saddest 
and most mysterious love stories of all time. No, the most mysterious story of all time is how you managed to get so many things wrong in the course of three sentences. All right, so let's just go off the context of the video. I think if I were just watching this, it would be safe to assume that these are the skeletons he is talking about, which it can't be because these are the lovers of Valdaro. And I talked about them in a TikTok a long time ago. And they aren't from Ukraine, they're from Mantua, Italy. But this isn't the only image they show. Could it be this one? N no, it couldn't because these are the lovers of Modena who were also found in Italy. And this one is also not a man and woman, it's two men. Furthermore, this can't be right because the lovers of Valdaro are 6,000 years old and the lovers of Modena are about 1,500 years old. And finally, a burial like this doesn't indicate that this is how these two died. I am so glad that the people at History 101 aren't in charge of doing forensic archaeology or they would dig up a grave and think that the person died because a gravestone fell on them. So I was curious and I did some research. And after some brief keyword searching, I found this, which seems to be what they're talking about. The date and location are correct, but none of the pictures they show seem to be from this article for some reason. But again, the actual story here is a great story. So once again, let me do their job for them and tell you what this find is all about. I can't find what this discovery is actually referred to as, so I'm gonna just call them the Petrakiv lovers because they were found close to the town of Petrakiv. It is believed that these two were part of the Wysoko culture, which was a subgroup of the Lusatian culture. And these groups of people were known to have intimate burials, with instances of the deceased's position where the man is kissing the woman's forehead, or the two are buried holding hands, or in the case of this discovery, where the two are in a lover's embrace. And this one is unfortunately pretty depressing. We don't know exactly how the man died, but it is theorized that he died before the woman did. And it is suggested suggested by some that her body could not have been positioned in this way, meaning that she was voluntarily buried alongside him. Professor Mikola Bandravisky suggests that she was buried alongside her deceased partner or husband and possibly drank poison before joining him in the grave. I don't think I could say it better than her, so I will let her say it herself. It is really fascinating to think about and try and understand what may have happened here, but regardless of what happened this site centuries ago, it resulted in these two being able to spend the last 3,000 years in each other's arms. So while in reality it is a tragic story, it truly is an example of truth often being more interesting than fiction. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Let's see what else we got. Tiny alien mummy. Oh, fuck, the Atacama alien. I was wondering how long it would be before I had to talk about this. This is a favorite of alien conspiracy theorists. I'm sure you can tell why. But let's see what these idiots have to say about it. Discovered in the Atacama Desert in Chile, this strange creature sparked up debates all over the world when it was discovered, with people wondering what it really is. The creature here is just six inches tall, with a conical head and unusually hard bones for its size, which negates the idea of it being the deformed skeleton of a human baby. By the looks of it, the creature looks like an alien. However, after some research, it was found that the bones of this strange creature were the exact same as other human beings. But even then, the fact that they were as strong as a six-year-old's opposed to the creature's size of an infant, we still don't know what this creature really is or where it came from. Pretty much everything he just said is wrong. He keeps calling it a creature, which is misleading. Creature, creature, the creature looks like an alien. Creature, creature, creature. But I guess it's an instance of if I just say the same bullshit enough times, I don't have to actually back it up with anything. Creature. He then says it can't be the skeleton of a human baby. Which negates the idea of it being the deformed skeleton of a human baby. Which is wrong. And he also can't pronounce conical. 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 Oh my god. And finally, he says we don't know what it is or where it came from. Which not only do we know one of those things, we also know both of those things. This is Ada. She is also known as the uh, uh, blah, blah. This is Ada. She is also known as the Atacama alien. She was found in 2003 near the settlement of La Noria, which is an abandoned settlement in the desert in the north of Chile. And she obviously raised some eyebrows with the coniacal skull and the fact that she only had 10 ribs as opposed to the standard 12. But in 2018, a group of researchers were able to sequence her entire genome. Found that the bones of this strange creature were as strong as a six-year-old's. Her bone age was found to be six to seven years 
years old, which is not indicative of how old the individual was. The reason that the bones had hardened and were at such an advanced state is because this individual had some form of skeletal dysplasia, also known more commonly as dwarfism. There were also a litany of other mutations that were found alongside this one, which all came together to result in these deformities. And the final nail in the coffin was that they were able to prove that these remains were of Chilean descent. The most likely option here is that this individual was born prematurely and was either stillborn or died shortly after birth due to her deformities. And it wasn't even all that old, it had likely only been in the desert for a handful of years before it was discovered. Unfortunately, these deformities were likely the acute results of prenatal exposure to nitrate, as the La Nodia settlement was associated with the nearby Humberstone mine, which focused on mining for nitrate in the desert. It is, of course, a very sad story, one where people who are desperate to put food on the table are forced to work some of the most inhumane conditions on planet Earth. And beyond the damage it does to them, it does damage like this to those who don't even have a choice. And unfortunately, this is just one of many examples where hazardous industry does far more than damage those who are working directly in it. So instead of trying to use this to back up their aliens on planet Earth, it should be seen as just another example of the devastation left behind by corporate greed. Wow, History 101, you're really bringing me down. I bet the next story is gonna be like, this is a pile of 10,000 dead puppies. Crocodile mass grave. Oh, I was so close. <laughs> In 2020, archaeologists discovered the body of a crocodile buried in the sand. And while incidents like these are pretty common out in the wild... Yeah, no, honestly, I totally get it. This is always a problem for me. One time went to the backyard to go dig a fire pit. Boom, sunk the shovel. Crocodile mass grave. Happens to the best of us. A little more digging revealed that this site was actually a mass grave of several mummified crocodiles who had been buried here for over 2,500 years. And while the reason for these mummified crocodiles being buried here still remains a mystery, these poor animals were most likely used for some cult ritual or a sacrifice for Sobek, the Egyptian god with the head of a crocodile back in the day. I don't understand you kids with your Nintendo Switches and your pronouns. Back when I was a kid, I used to sacrifice alligators to the Sobek cult. It's a wrap for most mysterious finds science can't explain. Which one of these discoveries shook you the most? See you next time with something new, and until then, goodbye. And there it was, that was the last one. Uh, there was no mystery behind it, it was just a guy being vaguely interested in crocodiles existing. A um, fairly misleading title, when the title should have just been a man talks about uh, being surprised that mummies are real and some other shit for five minutes. I really do think I'm gonna have to do the surprising discoveries from Antarctica one as well, just because I think it would be a good follow-up to this. If anyone at History 101 sees this, I'm offering myself as a fact checker. Frankly, it doesn't matter to me whether or not you accept the offer, because one way or another I'll be fact checking you. It's just up to you whether you want it to be before you publish your video or after you publish your video. Quick channel update. For those of you who don't know, I am a senior in college, meaning that I am in my final semester. I, I am in my third trimester. I'm gonna be incredibly busy for the next few weeks because I'm graduating, and after that, I am going to be moving out of this shitty apartment into a much nicer apartment, where I am thrilled to say I will be doing YouTube as my full-time job. I never thought I would be here, but I am absolutely thrilled to be able to say that I can be. So, the future of the channel going forward, there will probably be a little bit of a lull in videos just because I'm going to be moving and graduating and seeing family and friends and all that shit. But come the middle of May, I will be moving into my new place where I will hopefully have an actual set instead of a green screen, and I will be able to dedicate all of my time and energy into making videos. Some things to look forward to. You will definitely be seeing a lot more videos. You'll be seeing continuations of series that I have already started, things like Awful Archaeology and maybe This Month in Archaeology or the Archaeology News segment, as well as a whole bunch of other series which I already have planned. This is going to be a time where I'm going to be adopting a lot of new video formats and new series ideas, so if you guys have any feedback or ideas that you want to see with the channel going forward, make sure to drop those in the comments or DM me on Instagram or something like that. I have some very exciting brand news coming up, but I'm going to keep that one under the table for now. Um, I'll just give you a little hint. Did you like that? And beyond that, I've been offered many different sponsorship opportunities, so likely going forward, you will just have to sit through 60 seconds of ads in my videos. Um, it's the price that you pay for getting to watch this for free. But if you want to stay up to date with how everything is going, make sure to follow me on Twitter, where I'm going to be trying to keep you guys in the loop. Or you can follow me on Instagram if you want a little bit more of a personal look into my life. I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible. All of your names will be in the credits of this video. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, Slava Ukraine! <laughs>